Hello, everybody, and welcome to Table Takes. Uh, today is Friday, June 12th, and uh, we'll go ahead and say that uh, last week, if you noticed that we didn't have a show, and we did that in solidarity and to hope to, since it was a very serious thing that has been happening in the U.S., especially where we're located in Seattle, uh, a lot of voices need to be heard. Uh, with this Black Lives Matter movement. And we're going to go ahead and start it off with having like ways that we think uh, are more impa are impactful for us to do as a community to share these inf share this information, uh, where you can learn what is going on with this movement and how you can help, how you can research and how to educate yourself. So, um, I mean, Derek, do you want to share with uh, how, what uh, ways that people can donate to the Black Lives Matter movement? Sure. Uh, well, there's a lot of different causes that are kind of uh, coming to the forefront now, in addition to Black Lives Matter. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of us have been donating personally. Um, there's a lot yes. of people out there who have been, uh, you know, sharing different places to, to donate money. Um, if you're not sure, the kind of, um, you know, big three tend to be Black Lives Matter, um, the movement itself. Um, the NAACP, the ACLU. Um, Tiltify is a website that a lot of Twitch streamers have been using to uh, generate money uh, or to run fundraising campaigns of different kinds and to integrate that with their streams. And they have a section on their site specifically for Black Lives Matter that has a number of smaller, more focused um, donation places like um, uh, Bail Bond Funds or um, I Need Diverse Games is on there. Uh, you know, there's a handful of other different kind of programs. So if you feel like you want to help in some way and you want to donate and you don't really feel like you're kind of connecting with some of the major uh, programs, you might want to look at there and see if there's something that feels more local to you or more impactful or just kind of resonates with how you want to help contribute to things. Mm -hmm. And then ways to educate yourself. There is many books, movies, and of course, a lot of uh, online personalities, a lot of online resources. Uh, some of the books that we recommend is uh, out of books is The Immoral Life of Henrietta Lacks. Um, also, how, not, uh, how to be an anti-racist. Some movies that we also suggest is Moonlight and uh, um, is it the Criterion Collection. Cr criteria, sorry, that's a hard word for me to read. A Criterion cr Correction uh, has open Black creators and Black focus contexts. Mm -hmm. Also, um, well, so the, the I mean, yeah. Criterion Collection is worth mentioning just a little bit because um, people who are movie nerds, you know, probably know mm -hmm. exactly what their Criterion Collection is. Um, people who are movie buffs in general, um, have probably heard the name on different collections or different DVD releases or something like that. But the Criterion is a company that's been putting out like really well done remastered versions of like classic films, important films for a really, really long time. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, had a, have a website with a kind of a streaming service uh, that they've been doing for a while now. Um, I haven't gotten an account to it, so I don't know how well, I, I don't know how it compares to a lot of other ones, but it's, it's not a streaming service that tries to include everything that it could. It is really just focused on the classics and important movies that they've selected that they've released DVDs for and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a paid streaming service. To come out. What, what was that? Can't wait for Meatballs 2, the Criterion Collection version to come out. It may not have had Bill Murray, but it had heart. Yes. Well, so oh. what Criterion Collection has done here is they have made films by Black creators and focusing on Black issues and concerns. Uh, they made those free uh, uh, for people um, who don't have a full Criterion account. So, you know, this wow. is a great way to kind of get a starting curriculum watch list if you uh, want to start engaging with that. Mm -hmm. And then if you're more of a YouTube and Twitch kind of person, uh, there is Black AF Roundtable uh, on YouTube and also they have a stream live on uh, Twitch as well. Uh, one of them, Cypher, uh, Tanya, awesome human being. Uh, and she's been a forefront uh, many times in the v various different like tabletop role-playing community. Um, another uh, group to look at tomorrow, actually, uh, Black Girl Gamers uh, is doing an online summit uh, with a lot of various different, uh, mainly focusing on female uh, Black gamers, but also there are male uh, re representatives as well. That's starting on Saturday. 
Saturday, June 13th, 7 p.m. Uh, Greenwich morning time, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That will be on the front page of Twitch. And then, Christian, how can they get involved? How can they get involved? Well, there's lots of ways to get involved. If you are uh, if you are a supporter of this movement, obviously you can, if you are local to one, attend one of the many protests that are still happening in every state around the country. Uh, mm -hmm. You can attend those uh, as a protestor. It's a, it's a very good way to be active. If you don't want to be active, contact your representatives, contact your city council, your mayor. These are the only people that can actually uh, get this done when we're done yelling at them. So it's important that we let our lawmakers uh, know how we feel. That's a good way to do that. Sign petitions. Just be a voice out there and make sure you're listening to the other voices that are out there. That's uh, that's very important. Well, if you are going to go out also, please wear a mask, wear gloves, stay safe. Don't get shot. Yeah, on the topic of listening to other voices in particular, like there's a lot of, of black creators, a lot of black people on Twitter, on social media, uh, writing articles kind of all over the place, and talking about their feelings in the current situation, their feelings on, you know, the last 40 years of history, the last 60 years of history, the last 400 years of history in the U.S., uh, and sharing a lot of their own thoughts and anger about what, you know, the rest of the country, and in particular white folks, can do about the problem right now. So I think one of the best things that you can do is to actually just listen to them. And when you come across one who is sharing advice, again, that resonates with you, then share that yourself to your friends to spread mm -hmm. that news out further. Yeah. yeah. What they're saying is more important than anything that we can even think of saying. So listen. Mm -hmm. Listen. That's all we ask is listen and research. Um, mm -hmm. So... On that note, uh, with the circumstances is right now, because the world is, of course, on fire. Yay. Um, we are going to be diving into actually some serious topics uh, that have this has affected many aspects of the gaming world because this is a says human. This is a human problem. This isn't just like a little, little blip there. This it's a significant human problem. So as you can see, a lot of this will make waves of effect throughout various different aspects of gaming industry. Um, so just keep in mind that there is going to be uh, quite a bit of serious discussion today while we jump into all the various headlines. And uh, one of those- Not that we're still not gonna cover the fun stuff. because Yeah, we're still, still gonna do fun, fun stuff, stuff, but just just let you guys know, you know? Yeah, we're, we're, gonna, get a little, we're gonna get a little serious. It happens. Serious, serious. Uh, speak one of those serious topics, Derek, do you wanna go ahead and tell us what the heck is going on? Sure. So uh, some big news in the magic community is mm -hmm. that Wizards is finally straight up removing a number of cards that um, had uh, either racist overtones or undertones. Uh, so I believe there's seven cards total that they're removing. Um, not all of these cards are in current sets. Many of them are just in older sets, but they're removing them from uh, collections. They're removing the images that have been offensive and that people have been complaining about for quite a long time. Um, I think the the most problematic is uh, invoke prejudice, which um, yeah, yeah. So you know the the card itself was obviously about racism. Um, mm -hmm. You know the mechanics of the card were supposed to evoke that. The art on the card uh, was strongly reminiscent of you know, the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, the uh, it, people have been complaining about it for quite a long time and somehow, Over seven years. yeah. And, and somehow the cards ID in the database was 1488, um, which is also a kind of huge racist symbol, uh, or signal. So how, yeah. how that all came together, uh, is kind of mind boggling. Um, and you know, I'm sure that there are some folks who are concerned about pieces of Magic's history being removed from the game. But on the other hand, do, I mean, do we need all of those components in the game? Like, these cards aren't in active circulation. They're not being used. Is it really that bad for Wizards to uh, kind of remove things that are have clearly been making some, some players uncomfortable that are, you know, referencing things that, don't really have a place in magic at this point. So 
I, I feel so, like this is a step in the right direction. Like they said, this is just mm -hmm. the first wave. They're going through all the cards. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't just, uh, isn't just for like uh, people who happen to be black. Uh, it mm -hmm. also has to deal with uh, other people also like they, oh, there's several references to, of course, uh, the Romani, the, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, like some uh, Middle Eastern ethnicities mm -hmm. as I think well. Cru Crusade and Jihad were both removed as well. Yes. Yeah, so, so like this, uh, it definitely seems to be a time where Wizards is going back and reviewing a lot of the cards and reviewing community feedback uh, and seeing what would probably be healthier to remove from the game as opposed to keeping it. Mm -hmm. now, I, I, it bothers me that there are as many players as there are that are up in arms over this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's not that many, and I know it's just a vocal minority, but uh, there. The, the comparisons that they're drawing don't make any sense to me. I mean, if something is wrong, you should get rid of it. Like they, they're talking about like, you know, going back to when, uh, when they went and redid all the Looney Tunes and cut out all the extra violent stuff. Mm -hmm. They're kind of comparing it to that for some reason. And it's nothing like that. Mm -mm. Uh, they're, they're finding a problem with, you know, the fact that you know systemic racism is in fact systemic and it is mm -hmm. you know it, ingrained in so much of our culture. The fact that they're taking the time to go back and taking those things out that that can hurt people just by them existing shouldn't be a point of contention. I mean, it almost seems like if you're going to take the Looney Tunes comparison, it almost feels like it's maybe a little bit more like how there are old, um, you know, Disney. Mickey Mouse cartoons. Yeah, they're old yeah. Disney cartoons that are are quite racist. Um, yeah, like and, in Fantasia, is the biggest. Mm -hmm. oof. Or, you know, there's the Steamboat Willie stuff and all that kind of stuff. Like, there's there's a lot of stuff uh, that you just don't really see anymore um, because mm -hmm. it doesn't fit with what Disney wants to present as, you know, what we want Disney to present as a a, a family experience. Um, you know, that the, the history is still there. We all know it happened, but we don't yes. have to have it be part of the current well, collection of what magic is. Where in this world right now except a museum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, for for at least from me, from my perspective, as I don't know, like I know it's not a lot of people can tell, but I am a Pacific Islander um, POC. And uh, a lot of these things as good, at least from my see, I see it as a good thing because there are a lot of like subliminal messages that come from a lot of these things. Like for instance, like when I first came over here to the mainland, everybody was questioning why I wasn't wearing grass skirts and a lot of stuff. And that a lot of it is depicted in a lot of these various different fantasy and cards and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. things that just fix this to make it so people like, you know, it's not something like, oh, you know, it's blatantly out there. It's, it's subliminal stuff that dig into people's mind and then make them prejudice in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. So good moves for my part. Watsy making good moves. We like that. We like hearing that they're making good moves. Good job. Well, on that note, let's go ahead and you know what? After that serious topic, uh, Christian, can you give us some good news going on a uh, universe wise? Oh, okay. Well, I just, I saw this last week and uh, <laughs> there was so much going on. Like, but I think uh, you said I, you giggled. I did. I giggled out loud. I, I, I just, because I remember one of the first episodes of this show that I did, uh, I guess it was like the first or second episode of this show, uh, we were talking about Simon, and I didn't know who really they were because I didn't have a lot of board game experience other than the stuff that I, you know, pick up at conventions here and there. And, and we had talked about them, uh, you know, picking up different IPs, and it was kind of exciting that they were picking up all these cool IPs. Well, they've just announced that they are making a Masters of the Universe board game, and when I saw it, it made my whole week better because that I loved that stuff growing up. Like E-Man and the Masters of the Universe uh, taught me lessons every day after school, more so than I learned at school. And I just have always <laughs> had a, uh, a very, very soft spot for that IP. And I'm, I'm glad to see it uh, returning. I know they're doing a new Netflix show and everything, but this has that very classic Masters of the Universe styling and it's going to be a seam on board game. So we know it's going to at least be playable. Uh, so mm -hmm. do you know if do you, can you can you play it with the old uh, action figures? Oh gosh, I hope so. I have not. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, I I, I I didn't get to read too much about it because I wouldn't allow Bleeding Cool to send web push notifications. But 
yeah, I'm just, it, it's something that I'm going to keep my eye on and that I'm looking forward to, and I'm glad it's being announced. So, so I have a feeling when it comes out, you're going to give us a uh, whirlwind tour and a show and tell. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll probably do a full unboxing. That, that, I and then just bring out all the figurines and be like, look at it. And then have baby pictures and kid photos. It'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> excited about it i I was i was he-man for second third and fourth grade for halloween that's cool um all right on other related notes that is more uh good news uh more information released about the double masters uh from watsi basically wizard of the coast is going to be producing uh like as think of it as a pack of shinies super pretty super ultra like these are mostly just for collectors i wouldn't necessarily think this is for like playable cards uh also sorry guys our magical expert of uh, uh the magical uh, dean oh, is yeah. right now uh emma is doing her part and uh doing uh what it, sorry if i remember i cannot remember the uh protest that the, she is doing the, strike the, the yeah. general strike and silent silent march i believe uh, general strike and silent march so emma is doing her part um uh today so unfortunately she can't share this news but i can uh i'm also not the best magic uh expert but i can try i can try. yeah <laughs> but yeah each vip pack edition comes with 33 cards two are double uh sided uh or two double-sided uh, tokens. The complete pack contents breaks down as two foil showcase rares or mythics, two foil uh, rares or mythics, eight foil uncommons, nine foil commons, 12 full art uh, basic lands, two are foiled, and two foil double-sided tokens. So all of that, um, the sellers have been pre-selling the VIP uh, edition packs for around $185. So if you guys are very big magic lovers and really like shiny, shiny cards and beautiful art, this is this is for you, all the shiny. So um, I have to say my, my, my first thought with the amount of foil that you just mentioned, um, th okay. I admit this is not what's going to happen, but I, in my mind, I just had this amazing idea of how awesome it would be if Wizards made every one of these packs a glitter bomb and just didn't tell people. And then they just, because like there's so much foil already, they open it up and just boosh everywhere. Be amazing. Um, can you? Amazing. Can you? I, I just think right now, maybe Watsi shouldn't be engaging in practical jokes of any kind. <laughs> Personal opinion. Yeah, but there are some people out there who feel like the world just needs a little bit more glitter. Yeah, a little I just, bit more I just, glitter. I just don't need it from them right now. No. <laughs> glad yeah, glad to take the steps. <laughs> Baby steps. Um, another thing that is happening is the preview of the signature uh, spellbook cards for Chandra. Chandra. Chandra, sorry, Chandra set is uh, going on. Of course, Chandra being uh, the fiery pyromancer that everyone loved and he was author of doom yep chandra is uh is what i think emma said it might be her favorite character or one of her yes. favorite characters yeah emma. yes so uh, uh also if you guys go ahead and take a look we have some cards that we can preview up here uh most importantly there are a lot of very fluffy fluffy uh fluffy friends to be included in this uh set so if you guys just won, uh, if if you're down for the fluffiness and for, of course, the torchy loveliness, uh, this is probably the card for or the, the stuff that you can be looking forward to. I'm sorry, I'm not the magical expert. I really am. If you like fire and puppies, then this is fire the magic and year puppies. for you, apparently. Fire Wait, and I puppies. Fire and puppies. But don't combine. You can like fire and puppies, but not combine Puppies, please. Either way, I'm excited about it until Emma tells me not to be. Yeah. Emma, Emma, Emma will oh, probably come in. Guys. I could already hear Emma like, oh, God's doing this isn't. She's gonna tell us uh probably next week how horrible uh we did. But yes, just look, look at all of these beautiful, beautiful cards. <laughs> and and it most just, importantly, that... go ahead. No, go oh, ahead. Alpaline Watchdog is the most important of, of these these doggos. Just the most important. Say. Definitely the most, most important. important. Most important. Okay. All right. Good to know. So apparently that is your professional opinion is that the new most valuable meta card will be the puppy. Yes. Of Got course. Got it. Is, okay. Oh, 
Apple and I watched it. And I'll stake my magic reputation on it. Um, <laughs> as a surprise that you guys might not know of, Derek might know about Warhammer stuff. Surprise, surprise. Derek, yep. what well, is, what's the new Warhammer stuff? Yeah, so uh, we were talking a little bit about how 9th edition oh, got US, announced. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've been excited about it. Um, we we talked about kind of a lot before about they announced some stuff. It wasn't clear what was changing. They kind of dropped a lot of hints here and there, but it was going to be compatible with the existing books that had come out. So it's a kind of an interesting challenge for what they're putting together. But this week they have started releasing more and more rules tidbits. So if you go to the Warhammer community site, you can find information on... Um, you know, how, like, how blast weapons are going to work, terrain, what they're changing with tanks and monsters, how aircraft are working and stuff like that. And then tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern, they're doing a stream to reveal what the contents of the new starter set will be. And that's pretty big for everybody who's playing Warhammer. Whether or not you're kind of playing one of those main factions, knowing what's in the box is because anything that comes in that starter box is going to be very, very widely available. It'll be relatively cheap. It's going to be a pretty good way for you to get parts or get into a new army or something like that. So if you want to get the stream, see what's in the box, maybe see what the rule book will look like, all that kind of stuff, um, it will be on their Twitch channel and their community website at 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, and the, the teaser they have up today uh, suggests that Primaris Marines will get some uh, motorcycles. Uh, the Executioner guy that was shown off, the Justiciar, I believe, um, the uh, you know with the one of those flat tips uh, head chopper swords, he'll be in that set. And the Necrons are going to get a million new models. Okay. And that's uh, that's it. I'm excited. All excited. All right, we did try. I hope you guys were able to take a little bit of a breather from that news. Uh, we try to put in a little bit of light stuff before we come back with the punches. Uh, one of the things that we're going to go ahead and discuss about um, is a very, let me go ahead and tell you guys, a very um, controversial uh, topic that we're going to be discussing, uh, mainly uh Theresa Stewart, who works at Cards Against Humanities employee, came out uh, basically uh, saying that she had experienced uh, through the company's culture persistent microaggressions against um, her via either her sexuality or her like because she is a woman of color or a black uh, lady, uh, she experienced a lot of microtransgressions, uh, especially dealing with Max Telcom. Max Telcom, no, Telcom, Tenkin, Temkin, Temkin. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm really bad at names. That's fine. That's uh, what we're here for. That's why you yes. keep us around. Yes, because you guys are better at pronouncing names. You just know by yourself. Me. <laughs> oh no <laughs> but but yes um so we'll go ahead and link uh the thread and everything about it um max of course had allegations uh brought forth to him before multiple times throughout the years starting from uh 2014 um he hasn't made any official statements but anika uh sheer uh, An anita sarkeesian oh anita sarkeesian i'm very sorry i Really bad at names. No, it's, uh, it's, again, it's what you keep us around <laughs> for. We're here just for the names. Yes. Um, so the bigger thing is that, yes, she stated, um, if you go on ahead and go ahead and read and do your research about this topic, because it is a very touchy subject. It is a very uncomfortable subject that we do need to discuss and talk about um, within our community. And one of those is that, yes, she did have a very good working relationship with uh, Max, but unfortunately that just with all the information out there um, and her stance of, of course, uh, what many, many people should do is believe in the woman first. Uh, she is going to take a step back from their uh, relationship. Uh, he has yet to say anything on the matter. Um, and then I know that uh, some people here, especially at Gen Con, have uh, experiences, or not experience, but know on a personal level uh, what has happened, but not necessarily seen anything. Um, if you want to go ahead and share your feelings, uh, you can, but this is something that is very serious, and I do highly uh, suggest that people go ahead and look up all of that and just listen to the stories uh, that read are going on. Read the statements on Twitter, uh, read what the allegations are. 
educate yourself on it. Uh, I think, you know, it, it, it took some people by surprise, people who've, you know, uh, worked with them in the past, and then a lot of people it didn't. So yeah, for me, like, it, it, it's a very kind of complicated and uncomfortable thing for for me to deal with. Um, not to discount the folks who are actually in the midst of it suffering from it. But, you know, Max was a very close friend of mine. Um, you know, I worked with him, I worked for Cards Against Humanity at a number of conventions. And I felt very close to a number of members of that team. Uh, so, you know, I didn't work in the office, I didn't really have any exposure to the environment that, you know, everybody is not only uh, sharing these stories about, but everyone I have talked to has corroborated it. Um, so, you know, there doesn't seem to be a lot of doubt as to what was going on. And, you know, as somebody who worked with a lot of members of that team, uh, kind of on both sides of these accusations, uh, to find out that this was going on and to find out um, that, yeah, like th this seems to be what was going on uh, is, is heartbreaking for me, both for the people that I know who may have been involved in this, um, but also for the people who had to endure it. And the kind of other important thing that I think comes away from all of these stories is that a lot of the, the particularly women of color who are sharing the stories of the abuse that they suffered you know, in this work environment um, are also making it clear that like, this isn't unique to Cards Against Humanity. This isn't a problem that only the, those folks, you know, have been inflicting on each other. But this is a thing that they have seen in many other companies, particularly, you know, like um, young, uh, aggressive, like startup uh, tech companies that are run just by a crew of white men at the top. Uh, and, you know, kind of at some point you have to ask, like, if, if so many people you knew didn't see this happening or didn't feel like it was a thing that they could address at the time. And all these folks are saying that this is not unique and it happens everywhere. Like at what point do we realize that, you know, again, like, like so many other problems that we're seeing right now with black lives matter and the situation with the relationship that black folks have with the police and the problems they have there, you know, this to me is another example or illustration that while we're concentrating on Black Lives Matter, we have to remember that the police are not the only problem. Yes. Um, you know, it's the, a societal the, thing. Yeah, like government policies are not the only problem. This is something that extends to our workplaces, to our homes, to our relationships with each other as people. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it has been a pretty kind of horrific couple days it, it, to see the news spill out. I mean, it's it's not something that's new, especially for people, not just of people of color, people with different religion beliefs, people of different sexuality. This has been something that is a thing and we need to have these societal changes. We need to have these hard talks. We need to be respectful of people, no matter um, mm -hmm. how, what their belief systems are, what they, like who they choose to love. And, you know, one of the bigger things is like, yeah, you can't choose who you love and you can't choose what skin you're born with. So uh, when we start having these discussions and reaching a better understanding, we will start to fix, um, take baby steps. It's not going to happen mm -hmm. immediately. It's going to be baby steps. Um, yeah, but I, I think, you know, part of that is going to be listening to and believing people when they say they have problems. And part of it is going to be us having to be willing to accept it when those criticisms are laid against us or the people that we love. Um, you know, you don't, it's, it's hard to say, like, you don't have to immediately cut everyone out of your life when they have problems, but you can't give them a pass either. Um, you know, you, you can't change people, but you, you got to do what you can to, to let your friends and your colleagues know when they're doing things that, uh, are not right so that they can attempt to fix them. Mm -hmm. I guess is the, is the simple thing to say from here when I'm not in the midst of that situation. Yep. I, so I like it. I said, it's do your research. Inside. Yep. In, in inside it's probably, I, I can't imagine how these people must be feeling, uh, whether they're surprised by it or not, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not news anybody wants to get and it's awful that it happened. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, on more uh, news that has been circulating, that is also another uh, very controversial thing that has been going on. Uh, Christian, do you want to inform us? Um, what? Uh, long story short, uh, Origins is canceled. It wasn't canceled a couple days ago. Today it is canceled. They were going to be doing an online uh, convention, and uh, now they are not. And They were going to do an online convention in about a week. Yeah, in about a week, yep. and now that's not happening. Uh, I guess what makes that news is why, and uh, I don't like talking about it, but here we go. Uh, when the protests began, uh, they, they didn't immediately put out a statement either either way on the, on the subject. And by the time that they finally did put out a statement, it was weak. It was weak, and a lot of their, if not most or all of their uh, guests, dropped out. They were not having any more of it. They just canceled their appearances at the convention. Uh, and when they did that, the uh, they came out and uh, put out a statement that they were um, canceling because of the protests and not because all of the people of color that they had refused to go to their convention because they didn't make a statement on them. Uh, it's it, mistakes were definitely made here. Yep. I think I, 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 I let's talk about it for just a second because um, the 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 backpedaling everything it just it, it none of none of what they did was enough the whole way and they didn't take the steps that they could have taken to actually have a, a, a good convention and listen to the people that were giving them amazing advice. It just, it hurts, it hurts my feelings to see one of these big conventions, especially uh, have to take this route because they could have been a voice for good. And instead they are gonna be completely silenced because they did something stupid. Yeah, I think the Eric Lang um, who was supposed to be their guest of honor uh, and he was one of the the first people to kind of pull out, uh, or at least in the I first wave. The statement that he made too, if mm -hmm. you haven't yet, I know yep. everyone. Yeah, he had a he had a great statement um, that really tried to provide context as to what his concerns were, what other performers' concerns were, and how they felt that the or the statement that Origins put out um, didn't adequately address those. Uh, and then further, um, Leader Games recently put out a statement, I think yesterday perhaps, that mm -hmm. kind of takes it even a step further where they also identify where they felt the statement was lacking. Um, and they, they said the steps that they were going to personally take um, if Origins uh, or if Gamma as an organization um, doesn't take concrete steps to correct the situation. You know, they've pledged to not be involved in any future Gamma events. They're returning the Origins Awards they received for their games like Root. Um, they're just not going to publicize or associate with Gamma in any way until Gamma lays out a plan for how they're actually going to in both kind of try to address the situation, but improve their organization in general to make sure that something like this doesn't happen again. And that they're, you know, to demonstrate that they're gonna be working more towards the needs of uh, some of their marginalized uh, members. Mm -hmm. So like it's, it was definitely a, a whirlwind tour for um, like a day or two uh, and is still probably rumbling through the industry. So a lot of people may not even have heard of it or have gotten all the details um, or they may have heard some of the news and, you know, heard just that, a bunch of liberals got mad and canceled the convention and you know what's really going on here you know where i first got the news uh w was emma mm -hmm. yeah. yeah she was being she has she has a very fierce twitter game this week and it, it's been a joy to watch this mm -hmm. uh from yeah from tackled it and I, I i honestly i i miss her today more than ever just because uh she should be here to give this story because yeah yeah emma emma was the one of the first people like she brought my attention to it that that mm -hmm. counts for something yeah um, she was one of the first people i saw talking about it um mm -hmm. and she has kind of continued to keep up with it so honestly mm -hmm. i expect that that she'll have a lot more to say when she rejoins us either about this yeah. situation like, in specific I, I or about everybody know it was happening i didn't want to go too deep mm -hmm. into it just because 
like I feel like Emma has a lot more to say about this than I do. Uh, obviously, I can I can say stuff yeah. all day, but um, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, no, it it yeah, no, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say like if if you are a fan of Origins, um, if you've attended it in the past, uh, if you're a fan of Gamma, uh, or if you want Origins and Gamma to be you know a strong member of the community, then you kind of owe it to yourself to. Uh, research and read through this a little bit and then reach out to Gamma with how you feel about it so that you can let them know what you want them to do, both the immediate term and the long term, so that, you know, they can kind of get back in touch with the community they're supposed to be serving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's like this, basically make their voices heard. They understand that they did wrong and we'll just have to see what happens. It's, is I, I wish them the best education. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, on that note, I know we've been talking about a lot of uh, things that either, you know, emotional roller coaster, everything's on fire. Mm -hmm. This is, we need fire to start regrowing new growth is really what it is. Fire cleanse, regrow new growth afterwards. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to Bumba Bumba Bundle Boss, which is a lot. We have a lot to cover because a lot, not just uh, Bundle Boss, but a lot of gamers, gaming companies, people have just been stepping up their game uh, to fight for basic human rights. Mm -hmm. uh, Christian? The outpouring, has, the outpouring has been huge. And, uh, yes. And Bonsai, honestly, the bundles, this is why I'm here this week. Yes. I, I, I couldn't in good conscience uh, take part in Strike during this hour because we have a lot of information to get out and uh, not a lot of time to do it. There's there's so much in the bundles this week. So I'm going to go through them as semi-quickly as I can, but uh, no promises because we do have a lot. First off, we're going to start with our basics, our um, humble bundle. A uh, large collection to the fifth edition dungeons, ma dungeons, mazes, and barrows. Uh, a large collection of dungeons, adventures, and maps for fifth edition D and D. It's just uh, it's, it's a bunch of RPG book bundles for fifth edition ebooks like mm -hmm. Barrow Maze and Lighthouse, and a bunch of little quick threat books and some maps. And it just it's it's a great value for what it is. And uh, Humble Bundle's been doing a lot of charity work. They've been uh, giving a lot of money to some good causes. And this mm -hmm. is no uh, this is no exception. This benefits the book industry charitable fund, which assists bookstore and comic book stores employees and owners who encounter unexpected financial crises. Good time for that kind of thing. What with this whole pandemic thing yep. around. So, what again, with this unexpected financial crisis? Yeah, this is a <laughs> no very unexpected. Coming. Uh, the bundle of holding, though, uh, is mm -hmm. gigantic this week. Uh, and it's probably a game that you've never played before, which is even more fun to me because it's a it's a big RPG bundle about a game called The Dark Eye, which if you've never heard of it, you're not alone. I hadn't heard of it until this bundle came out. Uh, it is one of the most popular uh, role playing tabletop role playing games from Germany that has been uh, completely. Uh, translated. Yeah, that's the word translated. Yeah. <laughs> into English so uh, idiots like me can read it out loud. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's from a, a company called Ulysses Spiel. Uh, it's basically a very cool high fantasy RPG with all of the bells and whistles. And I'm talking D&D &D style bells and whistles. There are compendiums and maps and tokens, game master screen, source books, to get your to get your fantasy on, it was described initially to me as kind of a dark fantasy game. I don't see a lot of the darkness in the core book because everything is so bright, easy to read. The artwork is gorgeous. It's got an interesting character building system, which is point based, which uh, we talked a little bit about in our last show about that being a very popular style for character generation. Uh, and it's really interesting to look at games. Uh, from other countries that have, you know, that, that we haven't, as Americans, had a chance to see in print before, and how those games compared to the games that we play here in the States. And I got to tell you, this is, I, I'm kind of looking forward to maybe giving this a little testy at some point, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I you really know, like I, seeing a lot of these European games come over. Um, oh, yeah. I hope this kind of trend continues and we see not only more European games and more like idiosyncratic European games, but I would also love to see this kind of interest in. 
or Australian. I want to see all of them. Yep, yep, all yep. The I want to see this interesting. Let's get a in... world of game. World yep. of absolutely, yep. absolutely. So yeah, this is actually a, a, a huge bundle for what you're getting. Twelve ninety five gets you the player collection, which is the core rule book, lore books, player accessories like tokens and maps. Uh, and then you get, you know, for a little bit more, you get to the GM collection for about double the price. And it's basically everything. They've got so many books. Uh, it took me hours to unzip all these files when I went through them. There is just so much to go through. And everything looks like it's been translated really, really well. Not that German is the toughest language to translate from. But uh, because it's so easy, it's a very easy to read translation. Great, mm -hmm. great. And what does this benefit? Uh, yes, that's I was about to I was about to tell oh, you. Uh, that's, this benefits direct relief and the National Police Accountability Project. Uh, 50 50 on that. The next one, uh, also from Bundle of Holding, is Dark Eyed Kingdoms, which was expansions for the same game that we just talked about, including the Adventuria Companion. Uh, Adventuria being the fantasy world that they set this in. It gives a lot of lore, a lot of non-standard from what you're probably used to in D&D. Their idea of magic is, goes a little bit beyond the fancy and standard that we're used to. Uh, so it's, it's, it's definitely something that you haven't necessarily seen before. It goes for $14.95, get expanded combat rules to make it a little bit crunchier, full campaigns, a couple small adventures, and not to mention there's you know regional lore source books uh rule books with expanded equipment option i'm telling you this has got like everything like it's got like second edition D, &D bells and whistles on it so uh <laughs> there's there is just a lot of stuff it also benefits direct relief and the national police accountability project in equal shares you mm -hmm. thought i was done with bundles didn't you no we've just begun oh, we no. just begun just begun <laughs> so all right Next up is probably right now what I would call the most popular bundle on Twitter. Uh, I've been seeing the this mega bundle. Uh, I shared uh, it too. <laughs> oh yeah, no, this is the mega bundle to end all mega bundles. This is the itch.io bundle for racial justice and equality. All right, currently they have raised over five point six million dollars on this bundle because because people would want this even if it didn't benefit a good cause. Honestly, this bundle is is epic. It is giant. You can pay five bucks and, and get ten thousand dollars worth of stuff. There are only three days left on it. So uh, just to give you an idea of the kind of things that are in this bundle, not only does it have some great like tabletop games that we all love, uh, you know, tons of them, Blades in the Dark, Lancer RPG, which I've been wanting to play forever. Uh, yeah, Songbird, where RPG where you don't fight monsters, instead you help them with their emotional issues. Uh, also, it also includes a ton of cool indie PC games. So if you want in your collection more games than you could ever feasibly play before you die, even if you were a vampire, this might be your bundle. Uh, it's got uh, games like Nuclear, Throne, Overland, Anodyne. All the proceeds go to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and the Community Bail Fund, and they are split equally between the two organizations. That's important information because there's been a lot of uh, talk on Twitter wondering where this money goes. It's right there, folks. 50-50 NAACP Legal Defense Fund and the Community Bail Fund. Uh, they're, they're, it's a great bundle. It's only got three it's days left. Yeah. Pick it up. Yeah, I, so it, I it, bought it, too. I thought <laughs> I was done with bundles for a second, didn't you? Yeah, well, no, hold on. I mean, just to... Like it, it's really hard to emphasize how big this bundle is. So like, it's ridiculous. It's only got three days left. Watching the show anymore? The, that's the problem. It's there, there is so much. Mm -hmm. I'm looking it's at got, it right now, and I'm almost done talking to you guys about it because I want to look through it more. Uh, yeah. So so uh, it, it, it's got it's, it's got three so days left. Uh, games have been kind of continually being added to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think right now it started at 500 games. I. think think right now it's right now it's it's at 16 over a thousand uh, 1657 different games yeah uh, more. and uh, like it cinematic. yeah and and not only uh are there that many games but like i have seen multiple different like twitter threads and posts and like guides on how to navigate the bundle that you just bought like yeah, at this it's, point it's so big you have it you need a guide to yeah their next, bundle, their next bundle should just be the guide on how to get the how to, yeah. how to like, 
work. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that was the, the what we were talking about before. Is I kind of expect someone to release a a charity product that is. So you bought the bundle and you want to know how to navigate it. Well, here you go. <laughs> five dollars uh, for the bundle, twenty five for the bundle navigator. Yeah. So what I would say is like I, I I don't know if we have ever had a bundle where it is more like just go buy it. Um, if you have five dollars, go buy it. If you have more than five dollars, spend what you have more to just go buy it. Yeah. Because you know, like we all joke about how we have Steam libraries that have a ton of games we've never played because we bought them cheap or on sale or whatever. Like, if if you felt left out of that and you want a list of games that you haven't played, then buy this bundle and you will have you you will be filled with stuff to do for basically ever. Whether it's on mm-hmm. tabletop or video games. There's a, a ton of short, amazing, innovative, weird games to play around with and experience, whether you like them or not. Uh, through like it's just it's so good, it's mind boggling. And honestly, um, it's it's an incredibly good cause. Uh, Legal Defense Fund is you know the the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and the Community Bail Fund. That's something that is relevant right now. That is helping people right now. So. It's it's worth spending a couple bucks on. Mm-hmm. Plus, you get all of the games ever. Uh, I, and you guys thought you were done drinking from the hose. Guess what? No, no, no. I have just now turned the hose on. You didn't even see it coming. Uh, Drive through RPG has taken part in this as well. There is going to be. They have. Uh, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, there's a there's a bunch of bundles here. And I think like there's nine, nine different bundles. Nine, nine different buff bundles. That's so many bundles. Uh, and they have actually split the bundles up by instead of naming what kind of bundle they are, they are naming what charity that they are sending to. So that way you know right where it's going to from the very, very beginning. And it's very transparent. Uh, you can start with the Black Lives Matter 1 bundle, which comes with the Eclipse Phase 2nd Edition, Spyhander mm-hmm. RPG, Player's Handbook, plus... You know, phone PDF. Like multiple, multiple formats, basically. Yeah, multiple formats and uprising a dystopian universe RPG. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, so, well, I mean, to go through some of those, like Eclipse Phase is one that we've talked about and mentioned a lot. It's mm-hmm. uh, like a, a, a transhuman futuristic setting. Uh, you're traveling around the solar system. Your body doesn't matter. Yeah, like the, the whole core, <laughs> like, shtick of the game is that your mind is backed up every so often. So, if your character dies, you just need to get a new body and reboot your backup. So like the classic Eclipse Phase story is great. You all woke up, someone killed you. Your first mission is to go find out who did it and stop them from doing it again. Um, like that's just the classic story for that game. It's fantastic. And you can play an octopus if you want. Um, yep. <laughs> Zweihander, uh, we were talking about in the news uh, a couple uh, episodes ago. Yeah. They're like a, the very like, grim and dirty Warhammer fantasy role play kind of uh, RPG. And they just released a big compendium of content that's out on uh, Roll20. Yes. So this is the player's handbook. I think it's the same content that's on Roll20. Um, okay, you so you can dive into that. 20 as well. Yeah. And then uh, Uprising. Um, this is the Fate-powered RPG set in the universe of the Resistance. So if you play that party game, if you played any other board games around that, this is where you actually play the role-playing game of that you know, you are the resistance self fighting against a cyberpunk oh, cool. fascist dystopia. Love it. Seems timely. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Imagine mm-hmm. fighting against a dystopian society. That doesn't that doesn't strike any chords. No, no, no. Oh, irrelevant. Uh, so then we have Black Lives Matter two, right? Black yep. Lives Matter two is the second bundle from Drive Through RPG. It includes Mothership, a pound of flesh, Brave New World. The Great Pendragon Campaign, hmm. Chubo's Marvelous Witch Granting Engine, The Savage Sign, Troika, Numinous Edition, and Visigoths versus Malgoths, which I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they included that. We talked about I that. remember that. That was great. Yep. <laughs> yep. Well, so like it didn't just to run through those, like, you know, yeah. A Pound of Flesh for Mothership was uh, one of the books that talks about how to like make your own space station. Brave New World was one of the older classic superhero rpgs that was you know maybe a little more kind of in the watchman vein or you know planetary vein where there's a little bit of a darker take on superheroes Which a little less heroic best, honestly the best superhero stories 
Mm -hmm. The great, uh, the great Pendragon campaign is apparently one of the best, um, you know, campaign stories for Pendragon, which is also one of the best and most respected RPGs out there. Yeah. Um, the Savage Sign, I figured you'd be uh, uh, in for Christian because that's basically like a little magazine about Savage Worlds content. Right. So you get a is, whole... Which is the only magazine I would read anyway. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Troika is another one of those very, very popular indie games that you don't hear of too much outside of the indie game community. Uh, um, did you have a Kickstarter a few months back? There was a Kickstarter, I think, for, for something, something that was using it for something okay. like that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Visigoths versus Mogos, obviously, we covered on Kickstarter. And then there's also uh, Winterhorn, which is Winterhorn. a game um, by Billy Pulpit, people who did Fiasco and stuff like that. And that game is about how governments will influence and corrupt resistance movements, uh, like social movements against them. So, like, you know, like there's, there's a lot of timely, meaningful stuff here. People in chat are also sharing other games that they've found in here. Yeah. Um, you know, like their experiences so with some of these games, some of the like the other notable ones that they want to pull out. Yeah, keeps going because we also have we have we know, have a lot more bundles more. to go through. Did, did you think I was done with bundles? Because, no. Nah. All right. The next one is the NAACP Legal Defense Fund One bundle, which has a bunch of great stuff in it. Obviously, Urban Shadows, Witch, Faded Souls, Predation, Gardens of. Mm, which I just like to say, and Ruins of Grendel Root, uh, which sounds like a, I, I don't know what that is. Does anybody know Ruins of Grendel Root? Anyone? I do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that is from Sly Flourish, um, uh -huh. who some That's of folks may know. Familiar. Yep, yep. So Sly Flourish is on uh, Twitter and, and has a lot of uh, really amazing content. Um, and Ruins of Grendel Root is uh, his collection of several adventures in this like cool, fantastic location that he's made that you can run separately or that you can run as a combined campaign. Um, and then, you know, Urban Shadows is the Powered by the Apocalypse World of Darkness, basically. Yeah. So if you ever wanted to play that game where one person is a vampire and one person is a werewolf and one person is a mage, uh, this is the no, Powered by the Apocalypse to version to of that. Play in World of Darkness. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Uh, and then, you know, Predation is also worth calling out specifically because it's the um, cipher system um, uh, like alternate history, I think time travel one where you're fighting dinosaurs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some, you know, big games in some of these bundles. All right. Yeah. Next up, NAACP Legal Defense Fund 2 with Cthulhu Confidential. I got this one. Also recently talked about Inspire, which we talked about, what, last week? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's got well, some great stuff in it. Monza, uh, you said you wanted to talk about Cthulhu Confidential real quick? You were excited about it? Yes, because I, I haven't quite dug into the the world. I have it, it. I have. Uh, I bought it so I can go ahead and get into uh, into it. Mm -hmm. um, like it, it's just more or less. It's like, hey, it's 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 the more modern version of, of course, what like going through Cthulhu as uh, space. If you guys don't know, is pretty much like you have to investigate uh, unworldly things that will mind break you. Is, is, is that a pretty good summary of the game? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. Yeah, Cthulhu Confidential is the, the two-player version of it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then Spire that we talked about, that's the one where uh, you play Drow in a city that's occupied by high elves, and you have to you know, work as the resistance to take down a fascist regime. There seems I, to be a theme here. I well, don't... there's a theme. There's a theme I'm, to these bundles. I'm not, I'm not catching this theme. I'm so sorry, Derek. Mm. So we also have the National Police <laughs> Accountability Project One bundle. Yes, this one's got some great stuff in it. Mm -hmm. uh, they, actually, they've all had great stuff in them so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they all well, have. So, <laughs> yeah, ones that are really worth kind of calling out are Legacy: Life Among the Ruins, which is another Power by the Apocalypse game that was about you know set after the apocalypse, well after it, where you play characters but you also play families or factions. And right. you yep. rotate your character kind of through Wait, a, a very long-term campaign. Too. Uh, generations. Yep. Uh, Bulldogs is in there, which was a classic indie RPG from several years ago. Uh, Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk the edition. classic Cyberpunk second edition is in yeah, there. Yeah, good stuff, man. Um, and then Dream is Skewed. Yep, Dream is Skewed, Dream Apart, which uh, I haven't played, but I hear amazing stuff out from pretty much every corner. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the final um, drive... What was that? Icons. 
Yep, yep. Yeah, Icons is, is one of the, uh, again, another one of the classic superhero uh, RPGs. I haven't had a chance to play it. Um, but again, it's an, another one of the ones like from several years ago that was very, yeah, very I've, popular. I've got an old copy of it around somewhere in mm -hmm. my superhero RPG box collection. Mm -hmm. uh, so then the last kind of big collection on Drive-Thru RPG is the National Police Accountability Project 2. Like there's, they picked three charities and then each of those charities had two bundles for it. Uh, each of those right. bundles is huge, like $500 each for $20. Like it's great. It's deal. incredible value. So this one yep. has SIG Manual of the Primes, which is like a Planescape kind of um, inspired game. Uh, Blue Planet, um, the second edition player's handbook. I don't know if anybody else remembers that game. but I, I've never even heard of Blue Planet. Blue Planet was this uh, fantastic cyberpunk game that was set on a water world um, oh, that wow. had some... A really, really, really cool stuff. Um, uh, one of my favorite kind of settings out there. Um, there was Red Aegis, which was a fifth edition game that was up or a book up on Kickstarter that was all about kind of running a, a generation spanning D&D game. If you want to add mm -hmm. that to your D&D campaign. Um, Embers of the Forgotten Kingdom was on Kickstarter. I think we talked about it at one point. It's like if you want um, a setting that's inspired by Dark Souls that you could kind of port to whatever system you're using. Uh, there's a lot of really neat ideas in there. Um, Dungeon Crawl Classics is in there. The Starfinder edition of a cyberpunk setting, Interface Zero, is in there. Um, that, that would be that'd be worth the twenty bucks right there for me. Hmm? Yep. Yep. The new edition of Scion. If anybody remembers the old White Wolf game, I love mm -hmm. Scion. Well, you now the the new core book, uh, the Scion Book One Origin, uh, is in there. So, like, again, just just go grab these bundles. Oh yeah, yep. no my 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 first my gamer handle is from like the first uh, the first game of Scion I ever played. Wow, was that character it's in your little your online DNA there? Yeah, yeah, Crash Jackson. That's where he comes from. So um, yeah, so there's those bundles. There's also three bundles, one three for bundles each of those. The DMs Guild, both mm -hmm. with nine yep. days left. One from the yep. one for the National Police Accountability Project, one for the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, and one for Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. And so the DMs Guild is probably worth noting because the just in case you're not familiar with it, that's the the kind of um, side brand of uh, drive through RPG that allows independent creators to make their own products and in, uh, in official D and D settings and use like the Forgotten Realms IP or use the Ravnica IP and stuff like that, um, but still release you know PDFs online. So if you're looking for more D and D fifth edition content. It's a great place to go. Um, uh, unfortunately, we're not as familiar with a lot of the products on there, so we don't know what really exciting things to pull out. But just at a fundamental level, if you want more D and D content, we also had twelve bundles it, to go through. Yep, yep. You know, grab, grab <laughs> yeah, those three. There's, and you'll there's have so many bundles. But yeah, uh, if, if you're really looking for a way to help and you can't, you know, go out and protest and you you, you don't feel comfortable speaking, this this is a fantastic way to to get involved at least somehow. You know, mm -hmm. you, know where, you know where the money's going and you're getting something you like out of it too, uh, which you don't have to be ashamed of because you really are helping a good cause. So yeah, at least think think about at least taking a look at some of these, please. Yeah, and, and I think the most important uh, thing to remember is that with all of this, we are fighting for basic human rights. We are fighting mm -hmm. for a society change that we see that there has been a long time injustice, you know, that like the, the core fact is that we are fighting for humanity. So mm -hmm. uh, now with that, after we have totally been drenched with as much information as we possibly could, uh, also ha applause for all these companies and all these gaming groups stepping mm -hmm. up and also voicing their support for this. Now we can go to the Kickstarter queen. With Eric. Yep. Well, so we uh, we don't have a ton of Kickstarters this week, which I suppose may be helpful so that we don't tempt you to spend your money there and instead you can go buy bundles. Yes. Um, but to go through these relatively quickly, uh, the first one that we want to talk about with four days left is a new edition of a classic game, Kemet. This is Kemet Blood and Sand. Uh, it's, it's basically a special edition of the kind of territory control um, uh, army game or, you know, uh, figures on a board. Um, set in Egypt, you know, summoning monsters, kind of you know, allying with the different yeah, gods and things God, like that. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so you... They do have one of the coolest pantheons, especially if you're into that Warhammer stuff. 
<laughs> so, uh, you know, this one uh, it has upgraded components. It has bigger, better minis and all that kind of stuff. You get to actually build your little pyramid and put your little capstone on it. Um, it, it really is just looks like a gorgeous edition of a classic game. So if you've played Kemet before and love it, then absolutely give it a shot. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. So so somebody in chat was actually asking um, if they renamed because apparently there was a white power tile. Um, I do not know if that was renamed. Uh, I would certainly hope so. Uh, considering so, the too. circumstances. Uh, but Christian, you have a, another project for us. Yes, I do. I'm sorry. I got thrown off by white power tile. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Whoa. <clears throat> Next up, we have Fatum, a character creator uh, tarot style deck. Uh, this was, uh, I just thought this looked like fun. Honestly, I, you know, I, I pulled up the Kickstarter. I watched the little video, which didn't excite me very much. I thought the art was cute, but not like epic. I thought it had a very cool, clean style to it. Uh, I like the card designs. I like the card sizes. But what I really like is that I can do a draw on a deck for a player and we can create their character that way. I thought that was such an interesting thing to do, whether it's for D&D &D or really any game. You know, that, that character creation process can be daunting for some people. And if you can make it part of the story like this, it's a it's, a, it's an interesting tool. And I would like to play with it to see how it works. So I picked this Kickstarter. Huzzah! Yeah, I, I love using Tarot, too, for inspiration, character creation, stuff like that. We've seen a couple pop up, and this was another really pretty one that we wanted to share with people. Yeah, this is, this is really nice. You get 62 cards, a textile play mat, a rule book. Uh, and plus, the, all the stretch goals have been achieved so far. So we've got a bunch of newer artwork coming up for newer cards. And yeah, and like I said, the artwork is, it's good. It's clean. I like it. Christine. What um, about you? Five days left on that, folks. Uh, with uh, six days left, uh, Thursday, June 18th, uh, stop the train. Uh, basically, you, you do you guys? like social deduction games well this one is the social deduction game but you're on a runaway train headed for paris and there's a saboteur amongst you who's gonna as soon as the train arrives is gonna blow it up uh so this is a four to six player game uh unlike a lot of uh like social deduction games this actually does have a board uh, element to it, um, mm -hmm. which I think personally makes it a little bit more like you can actually see the train moving closer and closer to Paris. Mm -hmm. It it creates more of an incentive to go ahead more tension, and yeah. yeah, make more tension. Uh, all the players uh, except the saboteur share an objective of throwing off the, of course, the saboteur off the plane before they get there so it doesn't blow up. But also on counter, um, Is the plane makes things more. Yeah, huh? Sorry. Is this the plane that takes them to the train? The plane? What? Did you even throw them off the plane? I was just wondering if... Oh, you meant the train. Yeah, yeah, no, no you gotta just... Uh... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but, sorry. Uh, also, no, no, it's okay. Um, but also, uh, each of the individual ca characters have their own separate mission as well. So it makes a little bit more confusion because they're like, hey, why are you trying to get the train there so fast? Even though they're like, I have to get there for a birthday party or something. I love that the players get the secret roles too when they, yeah. when they play, like they can play a secret I, MI6 agent or yeah, that, that's just cool. Yeah, there's just, there's a lot of complex uh, uh, aspects to it. So one, if you like social dis did, uh uh deduction and trains <laughs> this is a game for you our kickstarters tell us so yeah, I, like, yeah. I like how you were trying to say if you like social distancing <laughs> <laughs> then you're gonna love the oh wait wait <laughs> maybe we were a little too immersed it's become so ingrained that we just say after social we say distancing now social distancing i say social you say what distance there we Six go feet. <laughs> So our last Kickstarter uh, with six days left ending on Thursday, June 18th is Nemesis Lockdown. And um, this is a standalone expansion for a game that has actually, uh, I think, gotten a, a fair amount of notoriety. Uh, apparently it showed up in um, South Park uh, at one point. Uh, and it, it basically oh, yeah. is it, it's trying to simulate or replicate like the, the alien experience to some degree or aliens, I think. Um, it's, it's definitely a Kickstarter board game. Uh, mm -hmm. you've got a bunch of minis, you've got a bunch of characters, you're kind of moving around a map, uh, in this particular one, like 
you're exploring this science facility on Mars and there's like a story involved. You've got backstories, you've got cards that will randomize abilities and weaknesses and stuff like that. You want to turn on the power to use the computers to do some stuff and survive. But I guess there's also a betrayal element where you shouldn't trust the other players too much because they might stab you in the back. Like it just, it looks really, really neat overall. Um, I know it's, I think one of the more popular, um, particularly sci-fi Kickstarter board games where it's just, you know, it is the cube experience uh, of a huge box full of stuff. Mm-hmm. And You're again, a, a crap ton of minis. It's mm-hmm. a lot. Yep. Is it, yep. our it is. Pack- capital K and, and the higher tiers just give you more minis like yep. more minis. you're not going to be running out of minis yep it's definitely <laughs> KBG. Uh, KBG and those are our, our, those are our limited kickstarters for this week yes yeah. well yeah that was it I mean, um better well, at the end with the kickstarters like <laughs> All the Kickstarters. But yes, well, the reason why we didn't have that much Kickstarters is because we did want to focus on the bundles because the bundles mm-hmm. are uh, ways that you can help with the Black Lives Matter movement uh, that is going on. on those today, by the way, guys, appreciate it. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and, and like I said before, thank you guys uh, so much for joining us. And don't forget that this uh, effort that we're doing now is not just something that we should do just for this week. We should continue for the rest of our lives. Uh, maybe also... Uh, like I said, get information, read the books that we suggest. Uh, also, like look at the various different information that we said in the beginning of the stream, uh, how there are, of course, uh, links and sites you can go to. There are people online, either on YouTube or on Twitch. Uh, speaking like tomorrow, there is going to be a bla- a game, uh, uh, like a bunch of uh, Black content creators speaking out about their own personal experiences and educating folks. And um, Black AF stream? Yes. You know, it's the uh, Black Girls Gamer. Black Girl yeah, Gamers Black Girls Online Gamers Summit. Online it's Summit. Tomorrow, uh, Saturday at seven or sorry, noon Pacific. Noon Pacific. Uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. and then um, also to I'm asking questions to those. What are we doing? What are we doing? All the things. Uh, uh, but yeah, so guys. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for Table Takes. But also after this, we're going to have a Gen Con conversation about uh, online stream info. So not only, like, you know, basically we're going to go ahead and talk to you about using other platforms because Gen Con itself, we're not going to be having a physical space. We're going on the internet. We're going into the matrix. Matrix. Uh, so we're going to introduce you to various third party tools for video and video on voice chat. Um, Derek and I will be on there with, of course, a couple of other people as well. Uh, my, yeah, my buddy Toby uh, from D20 Pro is going to join us. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. And, and guys, don't forget that we don't just stream on Friday. We have a whole streaming schedule going on. Uh, Mondays at 6 p.m. Board Games with the Brothers Mirth. Uh, Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Uh, this game gets dicey. Uh, 4 p.m. is Fireside with uh, Peter Atkinson. He gives you all the dirty secrets behind the scenes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and Fridays, of course, 2 p.m. Table Takes with our beautiful faces that you can see, all of us lovely people. And at 3.30, as we get closer uh, to uh, Gen Con Online, we're going to have more and more information for to share with you guys on how you can get set up into this digital experience. Uh, don't forget to follow, subscribe, turn on your notifications. And if you miss the shows, you can always uh, catch our streams on YouTube or on VODs. And thank you guys so much uh, for joining us. Uh, remember, be safe. Uh, there is still a pandemic going around along with all these protests. And all we ask is for you guys to listen and be safe and healthy. Take care thank you. Take care of each other. Bye.